Hello guys! Today we are going to talk about how we can make an API to upload your files to AWS C3 using a service architecture. To do this, we are going to be using the following AWS services AWS API Gateway, AWS Lambda and AWS C3. To help us to deploy our function to the AWS, we are going to be using the serverless framework. So let's do this! Hello guys, welcome to the session code. To start our project, we need to do some things before. The first one will be create a new user to be used by the serverless firm to deploy our function to the AWS. And the second one will be to install the serverless framework and configure the credentials created. So let's start creating our credentials. Okay, at AWS Management Console, we need to find by the IAM service. At IAM panel, we need to select the access management users. Add a new user. Here we need to define our username and select which will be the access type. Uh, I will choose access key, programmatic access. Set some permission. Here I'm setting administrator X as it is just for the demonstration. Uh, the tags will be left empty. Here we can review our informations. Okay, or is right. And so let's create a user. With the user created, the AWS will give us the access key ID and the secret access key for us to configure our credentials. Come back to VS Code. Okay, so now we need to install the serverless framework to later configure these credentials to be used by it. So let's ins install the serverless framework using npm. As we can see, I'm installing the serverless framework using the dash g. So in this way, we can call serverless from anywhere. So now let's wait until the installation finishes. Okay, the installation completed. So now we can configure the AWS credentials that will be used by the serverless firmware. So let's do this. Serverless config credentials dash dash provider that will be AWS R access key and our secret. Okay, so now the serverless framework was configured to interact with AWS to create our resources and to deploy our functions. So now we're going to start our project. To start a new project using the serverless framework, we need to type the serverless into our terminal. After it, the serverless will give us some options of templates to start our project. I will choose the Node.js starter template. The name of the project. Let's wait the download of the template. Okay, the template was downloaded. I will skip this question. Uh, I don't want to deploy my project now. Uh, here the, the service has a little bug, so we need to type that you don't want to deploy our project twice. Okay, so now our project was created. Here are our project. So let's get into it. Okay. Uh, so basically here uh, we'll talk about the files that were created by the serverless firmware. The serverless YAML is the main file that will contain all the configuration of your project that will be read by the serverless firmware to take the decisions to see which resource it must create at AWS and deploy with functions. At the handler.js will be our source code that will receive our request and upload our file to AWS S3. So here I will explain a little bit about uh, what we have here in the serverless YAML. At the provider uh, we have some configurations 
global that will be the name of our provider that will be AWS which will be the runtime that will execute our function in this case will be Node.js 12 in the function sections will be the functions that will be deployed by the serverless firm so here are the hello function as the example that was generated by the template that have a handler that is referencing the function hello exported by the handler.js file as you can see here Okay, so I will replace this code source with the source of our function that will be used to receive the file and upload it to the AWS3 bucket. So, as we can see here, we are requiring two libs, the AWS SDK that will be injected automatically by the Lambda runtime and the parse mode part. The parse mode part will be used to help us extract the content of our request that will be a multi part farm data. So let's run an npm init to generate a new node project that will contain the package JSON that will be needed to install the parse multi part. npm init dash y. Okay, so now we have a package JSON created. Now we can install the parse multi part library. npm install parse multi part. So Let's wait until the okay the the package was installed. Okay, so let's continue explain our function. Uh, the bucket const contain the bucket name. The bucket name will be injected through the environment variables that will be created later into the server's YAML. The S3 const will contain object S3 that will be used to put our object into our bucket. So now let's explain the search code of our function. Uh, here we are using the async keyword that will allow us to use the await keyword. Uh, the, the parameter will be the event that will contain all information about our request. The first thing that we need to do is extract the file content and your file name. To do this we are going to use the extract file function that we receive the event as a parameter, and we use the parse mode part functions, the get boundary to extract the boundary from content type inside the headers that will be used to extract the payload of our file inside uh, the body of your request. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the content of your body will be encoded as base64 by the AWS gate for binary types. So the parse function basically will extract the content of your files and your file names. As you are upload just one file once, we will have just one file name and one data. So after this, we return the file name and the data. Okay, if the file name and the data extracted, we will be using the S3 put object function to put the file into the AWS S3 bucket. As we can see here, we have an object as parameter that will have some keys. The bucket that will contain the bucket name, uh, the key prop that will have the file name, that will be the key for the file into the AWS C3 bucket. The ACL access control list that will contain public read. So in this way, our files will be public. They don't need the authentication to be used and the body that will contain the data of our file. Here, as you can see, I'm converting my function into a promise to allow the use of a weird keyword. If uh, we don't have any problems, uh, so we can return the status code 200 as OK, and into the body, we return a JSON with the proper linking containing a link to our file recently uploaded. If you have an error, we will cut them here and you will return an internal server error and into the body a message containing the error message. Okay, so basically our function was explained. So now we need to configure some things into the service YAML file. Okay, to speed up our project and for me able to explain, I will pass my all configuration that was done before. So here, uh, at the provider, we need to have 
a property called API Gator. There we say to AWS API Gator allow these binary media types that will be specified here. As we are uploading uh, just the multi-part form data now, uh, I will set just this media type. Into the functions, as we can see, we change the hello for uploader and in the handler, I change the hello function to handle. So here uh, is the main thing that will be used to interact with AWS function that will be the AWS API gate endpoint. So here we are defining a HTTP endpoint with a post method at the file upload path. The role property will be used to specify which role will be used by our function that will be explained later and environment that will contain the bucket environment that will be injected into our function as we saw into the search code. So here I create the models land concatenating with the e stage. So if none stage was passed on the deploy, the dev will be used. At the research uh, section, we will have the mods land bug that will be created and our role that will have all permissions that our function will need. So here in the mods land bug, we create a type AWS tree bug with some properties. The, the only property that required is the bug name. Uh, as you can see, we are using the same way that we are using into the environment bucket. In our upload role, you have the effect of assume role with the following policies. Uh, this role will be able to put object the AWS tree, uh, change the ACL of S3 files at the research that we are creating, and it also allows create log group, log string, and put log events into the cloud watt that will be created by the serverless firm by default. Okay, now you just need to deploy our project to the AWS. The serverless framework will deploy our project at US East 1 region and stage dev as default, but you can change passing the dash dash stage or dash dash region parameters for the serverless command. Here I'm using the default values. So I just need to type serverless deploy. Okay. So now I will wait until the deploy process finishing and I will come back. Okay guys, so now our project was deployed to AWS. As you can see here, the serverless firmware already gives us the URL to access the endpoint that will interact with our AWS Lambda function. So to test it, I will copy this link and I will use the Insomnia client. So here I will create a new request, upload, there will be a post method with a multi part form for the content type. Let's place our URL, uh, the multi part will be a field called file, that will be the type of file. Here I am choose the mods lane file, and now we just need to send our request. As you can see, our function is working. So here we have the link uh, property with the link for our file. So to test that was file was stored in AWS S3, we're copying this link and let's paste into the, our browser. Well, uh, the file was downloaded and here are the mods land file that was uploaded. So basically, always working. Well, today we saw how we can make an API to upload your files to AWS C3 using a serverless architecture. You are investing a lot of energy into the serverless architecture because you really believe in its power and how it can be used to improve our architectures. If you like us, are interested in the AWS and serverless architectures, like this video, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications for sure are more to come. See you!